Welcome to this special episode of Face Islam, the program dealing with the problems and issues that Muslims face every day. In this episode, I want to talk about a word in the Arabic language, yatim. What is yatim? The yatim is the orphan, the one who is without a father. Now, in the Arabic language, you don't have to have both parents to be deceased, to be qualified as a yatim or an orphan. There are many orphans that we talk about in the history of Islam. Their mother was still alive, but their father has died. Oftentimes, though, we do have the case where a child has lost both the mother and the father. What is the status of the yatim, the orphan in Islam? First and foremost, we find in the Quran that Allah tells us why we have such bad things happen to us. When you have bad things happening to you, it is a ibtila, it's a test from Allah. And we think, oh, look how Allah has disgraced me. And he says, no. But it's because you don't take care of the orphans. And you don't feed the poor and when they're impoverished. But we want to come back to the orphan. What is the status of the orphan? If anybody would like to draw closer to Allah and be in the next life in good shape, one of the best things you can do is take care of the orphans. Make sure that orphan child doesn't feel abandoned and alone and devastated. Because everybody has rights. So you're giving that orphan their rights to help a young boy or a young girl to be raised up properly. If you're unable to bring them into your home for whatever reason, help them to be in another home. Make sure they have lodging, food, clothing, proper education, and above all, respect. Because some people will say love, but how, <laughs> define love, but respect, honor, dignity, to treat them as though they're just as good as anybody else. Because it hurts a lot when you're one or other or both of your parents have passed away. The child is devastated, especially at you know, the older ages. In our family, my father's mother passed away when he was only four years old. And they dressed him up and took him to the funeral. That was in 1921. And he attended the funeral of his own mother. And do you know what they told him? Somebody told him, your mother died because you were a bad boy. What a horrible thing to say to somebody. But it had an effect on him. He thought because something he did, his mother died. Five years later, in 1926, when he went in the house from school to see his father, he found his father laying there dead on the couch. So my father was an orphan, complete orphan. Mother and father both passed away by the time he was nine years old. He had an older brother, and both of them went from one foster home to another to another until finally... One of our adopted relatives took him in, adopted him, and raised him up. In that experience, my father told me many things how orphans feel. And I was able to understand firsthand, from him at least, the experiences, the way they were mistreated from one foster home to another, the things that they did to the children, the way they abused them, the way they teased them, the things that kids said about, about them at school. But when they stuck together, my father and his brother, which is, of course was my uncle, they managed to get by pretty good. But by themselves, one or the other, they wound up in fights, got in problems. Because it always came to this one thing. They felt like they weren't as good as other people. They felt other people were looking down or condescending to them or giving them handouts. Oh, give them the old clothes. Here's old clothes. You must be an orphan. Here, take some old clothes. Huh? or food that nobody else wants. Give it to the orphans. This is not what Islam is telling us. It's telling us to treat them first class. Huh? Not economy class, not business class. <laughs> first class. 
Let that child feel he's as important as anybody else. Work with them. Give them a chance to feel like a normal human being as they grow up. That's Islam. And this is something we're being called to by the Quran and by the example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Prior to Islam coming, orphans in the Arabian Peninsula had no rights whatsoever. In fact, if a little girl's parents died or her father died, somebody would say, I marry this girl. And she might be two years old. And they would say, I marry her. Because it, it wasn't about intercourse. It was about taking her wealth away from her. She inherits from her father. But women had no rights. So that's why the beginning of chapter 4 of the Quran, Surah An-Nisa deals with this subject about the orphan girls, telling us clearly, don't do that with these orphan girls. Don't marry these orphan girls. Don't mix their money with your money. Don't take their wealth and act like you're going to improve it for them. Because in reality, you know what you're doing. Verse 3 is where Allah says clearly, marry other women of your choice. Don't marry these little girls like that. Take care of them. Be responsible. Help them. But don't marry them because they're not old enough. In chapter 4, verse 19, Allah says, you don't inherit women against their will. And it's not considered that a girl has a will, really a choice, you know, a choice to do what she wants to do until she's mature. That's why in Islam, an orphan girl or any girl has to reach the age of puberty and old enough to have babies before she can get married. Regardless if the parents said, we want to get her married. We have an example of that in Islam, that the parents of Aisha wanted her to get married to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But he didn't marry her until she was old enough to have children. Because this is Islam. We have the responsibility always to take care of the children and especially the yatim, the orphans. This is Islam, and this is face Islam. <laughs>